this video, we're going to talk about chemical equilibrium. So chemical equilibrium is a state that's reached when the concentrations of our reactants and products remain constant over time. So we tend to think about in a, a chemical equation as going from reactants to products. And we talk about it as if we always go from reactants and we get rid of all the reactants and end up with all products. But that's not really what happens in all cases. Some reactions will go mostly to products with very little reactants remaining. But some reactions actually can go in both directions. So for example, if we have a reaction like N2O4 that yields 2NO2, we don't convert all the N2O4 into NO2 and just end up with no N2O4 and 100% NO2. It doesn't work that way. We actually have concentrations of both N2O4 and NO2 once we reach equilibrium. Now, this doesn't mean that at that point nothing is happening. We are still going back and forth. N2O4 breaks down into NO2, and NO2 reacts to form N2O4. But what happens is this reaction is going at the same rate in the forward and the reverse directions. So essentially, our concentration of reactant and product does not change over time. So to look at this from a visual standpoint, if we start with a certain concentration of N2O4, and at first we have no NO2, some of this N2O4 is going to break down into NO2, and this reaction can go in both directions, but eventually we're going to get to a point where the N2O4 is breaking down into NO2, and NO2 is reacting to form N2O4 at the same pace, so our concentration of those two is no longer changing. We can actually do the opposite, where we start with only NO2, which in our reaction as it was written as a product, but if we start with just NO2, some of that is going to break down into N2O4 since this reaction actually goes in either direction. Some of it's going to break down into N2O4, and then some of that N2O4 is going to break down into NO2. So eventually we again reach a, pr a point where the concentrations of these two are not changing. And we call that point chemical equilibrium. So as I mentioned, it's not that nothing is happening. It's just that the rate of the forward reaction and the rate of the reverse reaction is equal. So we're going back and forth at equal rates. Therefore, our concentrations don't change. So, as usual, we can write an equation for these things, and what we call our equation in this case is an equilibrium constant. So, an equilibrium constant is an expression that compares the concentration of our reactants and the concentration of our products. Now, we use a capital K to designate an equilibrium constant. So be very careful with your K's. Capital K and little k mean different things. Capital K is an equilibrium constant. Little k is a rate constant, so they're different things. Capital K, or equilibrium constant, is expressed as the concentration of the products over the concentration of the reactants. You will notice these are raised to a power. For our equilibrium constant, these powers actually come from the stoichiometric coefficients. So if we have, for example, our reaction with N2O4 reacting to form 2NO2, our expression for that equation 
that reaction is the concentration of NO2 squared over the concentration of N2O4. Notice we have a coefficient of 2 before the NO2. The NO2 is squared. So for equilibrium constants, the superscripts do come from the stoichiometric coefficients. So if we measure that equilibrium constant for this reaction, it happens to come out to 4.63 times 10 to the negative 3. So K is always going to be the same for a particular reaction at a particular temperature. Now if we change the temperature, then this equilibrium, the value of this equilibrium constant would change. So K is independent of concentration changes for a particular reaction. If we put different concentrations in here, we would still come out with the same value. But it is dependent on the temperature. So if we take a generic reaction, where we have our generic reactants A and B reacting to form our generic product C and D, we could write an equilibrium expression for that, where each of our products and each of our reactants are raised to their coefficients. So you will see sometimes just K, or sometimes you will see the equilibrium constant written as Kc. Both of those mean the same thing. Sometimes we specify it as Kc to distinguish it from other types of equilibrium constants, but sometimes we will just use K by itself. When these reactants and products are in brackets, this refers to concentration in units of moles per liter, or molarity. So make sure when you're doing this that you put these in brackets. If they are not in brackets, that doesn't mean the same thing. The brackets specifically designate a concentration in units of molarity. We can also write an expression using partial pressures. Sometimes when we have gases, it's actually easier to measure the pressure than it is to measure the concentrations. So we can actually write these, the equilibrium constant in terms of the partial pressures raised to their coefficients from the reaction rather than the concentrations. And we can actually relate these to Kp is equal to Kc times Rt raised to the change in the number of moles. So R in this expression is the gas constant, T is the temperature in Kelvin, and N is the change in the number of moles. So we will get some practice using this expression later on. So in these equations, I mentioned this on the last slide, K and Kc are both used for the equilibrium constant when we're talking about concentrations. Kp is only used when we're talking about the equilibrium constant using the partial pressures of gases. So when we write an equilibrium constant expression, we include reactants that are and products that are in the gaseous state or that are aqueous but we leave out things that are pure solids and pure liquids. The things that are pure solids, the concentration is not going to affect what we're doing because for a solid, it only matters the surface area. So we only include things that are gaseous or aqueous.
So let's take a look at a few examples in minor equilibrium constant expression. If we look at the first equation here, we have H2O plus CO yields H2 plus CO2. So we can write our equilibrium constant expression, Kc, or you could just write K and that would be fine. So we do products over react reactants. So we would have H2 times CO2 over H2O times CO. Now in the next one, we have two H2O. So if we're going to write an equilibrium constant expression for this one, we have to raise H2O So it's always products of a reactant and always raised to the power of their coefficients from the reaction. So I'm going to let you do the third reaction on your own. And we're going to take a look at the fourth reaction together. So we do not include solids or liquids. So calcium carbonate is a solid and calcium oxide is also a solid. So those would not be included in our equilibrium expression. So our Kc for this reaction would just be equal to the concentration of CO2. So I will leave the fifth and sixth reactions down here at the bottom for you to try on your own. And we will take a look at some of these in class as well. Let's get some practice here doing some calculations with the equilibrium constant. So we want to calculate the equilibrium constant for the following system at 500 degrees Celsius. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to write an equilibrium expression for this reaction. So Kc would be equal to NH3 squared over N2 times H2 cubed and then we can plug in our concentrations so for ammonia, we have a concentration of 0 0.157. For N2, we have a concentration of 0.921 molar. And for H2, we have a concentration of 0. 763 molar. So if you plug that into your calculator, 0.157 squared divided by 0 0.921 times 0 0.763 cubed, that comes out to 0 0.0603. And Kc is a unitless expression. We don't include units for the equilibrium constant. So this is one of the few times where I will tell you not to put units because we consider this value to be unitless. So what is the equilibrium constant used for? What does it actually mean? We can calculate that value 
for the value by itself doesn't really help us if we don't have if it has no meaning. Well, the value of the equilibrium constant actually tells us something about the reaction. It tells us how far the reaction proceeds to completion. If we have a very small Kc, meaning that Kc is smaller than 10 to the negative third, then that means that our reaction doesn't proceed very much. So that means that we still have mostly reactants at equilibrium and only a very small concentration of products. So for example, if we have something like H2O yields H2 and O2, we don't get very much H2 and O2 out at 500 Kelvin. In fact, that reaction is not going to be very spontaneous at all. At the other end of the spectrum, if Kc is very large, meaning greater than 10 to the third, then that tells us that the reaction proceeds nearly to completion. So for example, if we take this reaction in reverse, and we're going from hydrogen gas and oxygen gas to form water molecules, this reaction is spontaneous. If you mix hydrogen gas and oxygen gas at the right temperature, they will readily form water molecules. So this reaction, you would see mostly product at the end if you were measuring concentrations, or since it's a gas, you could measure partial pressures. If you were measuring how much product you form, you would find that at the end of this, when we've reached equilibrium, there is mostly water and very little concentration of your reactants. If you're somewhere in the middle, in between 10 to the negative 3 and 10 to the positive 3, then you've got a pretty decent concentration of both your reactants and your products at equilibrium. So we don't go heavily towards the reactant side, or heavily towards the product sign, we end up somewhere in the middle. And you would find that you have measurable concentrations, not necessarily equal concentrations, but you would have measurable concentrations of your product and of your react. So what if you have K for the forward reaction? And for some reason, you need K for the reverse reaction. So sometimes if we're doing a calculation, we might be given K for a reaction. And then we might find that we actually need to calculate K for the reaction in reverse. Well, we can actually do that by simply taking Kc for the forward reaction and dividing it, taking the reciprocal. So in this case, we're given Kc for the reverse reaction. If we want Kc for the forward reaction, we take the reciprocal of K for the reverse reaction. So if you're flipping a reaction, to get the reaction, the equilibrium constant for the reverse reaction, we take the reciprocal. So let's take a look at some examples here where we have K for one reaction and we need to figure out K for another. So we have the reaction N2O4 yields 2NO2 and we're given Kc for that reaction. Part A asks us to determine Kc for the reverse reaction. So as I mentioned in the last slide, what we're going to do is we're going to take the reciprocal here. So Kc for the reverse of the reaction that we're given is equal to 1 over Kc for the reaction that we were given here at the top. So we would take 1 divided by 4.63 times 10 to the negative 3. And if you divide that out, you come out with 216. 
Now the second reaction says determine Kc for the reaction NO2 yields one half N2O4. If we look carefully at this reaction, everything is divided in half from the reaction that we had in A. So we had two NO2 here in A, we only have one in B. We had one N2O4 in A, we only have half of N2O4 in B. So the way that we do this, so Kc for the reaction when we're taking half of everything is raised to the one half power. So we calculated Kc was 216 for this reaction. We take 216 to the power of one half. So 216 to the power of one half, that comes out to 14.7. So let's take a look at one more example here. We want to determine Kp for this reaction. And it's Kp for the reaction that we were given to start with. So I mentioned earlier the equation to calculate Kp from Kc is Kp is equal to Kc times Rt to the delta n. So delta n is the change in the number of moles. So we take the number of moles of product minus the number of moles of reactant. So we get two moles of product and one mole of reactant. So two minus one gives us a delta N of one. So then we can plug in. We were given Kc is 4.63 times 10 to the negative three. R in this case is the R that is the gas constant. Oops, left out an 8 here. So 08206 liters times ATM over Kelvin times mole. And our temperature is 250 degrees Celsius. We need to convert that to Kelvin. So 250 plus 273 would give us a temperature of 523 Kelvin. And then delta N was 1. So if we plug this in, 4.63 times 10 to the negative 3 times 0 0.08206 times 523, that comes out to 0.199. So we will stop here and we will get some more practice with writing equilibrium constant expressions and doing some calculations in class. So I will see you in class.